So if you guys missed it, I was hanging out with Jeff Holiday, Rags, Wizard of Cos, and Undoomed in a live stream talking about the developers of Mass Effect Andromeda and how racist he is. I tried my hardest not to fanboy so much for hanging out with the people that I'm a huge fan of, but well, I was there keeping my calm. It was tons of fun. Anyway, other than talking about Manfear Air, we also talk about Jennifer Hepler, the writer of Dragon Age 2 who admits that she doesn't like playing video games, and Sam Maggs, a former writer of The Mary Sue who once complained about how Frank Cho's Spider-Man cover parody is problematic, and also this chick. Online, they can take your character, lock them in place, have made their character pantsless, and then can simulate sexual assault. Holy shit, he just shot him in the dick! Three times in the dick! That's deplorable and should not be allowed anywhere. Like, they should be banned. When you can hear the person on the other end who's saying these things directly to you and they're saying them directly to you, that's a whole other level of harassment, really. Now that stream started because Jeff Holiday tweeted that he refused to buy Mass Effect Andromeda because one of the developers is racist, and he got quite a flack from some people accusing him of being the same as the SJWs for adopting their tactics. Top Hass and Champagne also made a video on this, he also got the same kind of backlash from his viewers after he said that his boycott of this game is perfectly justified. Now to be perfectly fair to the people who complain that they're doing it like the SJWs, I can see why they're complaining, I mean what they're doing there is almost similar to them, at least to the naked eye, which is why we should examine this even further. I mean seriously, are we staring too long into the abyss to the point where we have turned into the monsters that we sought to fight in the first place? Or is it just consumer purchase decisions and that their decisions have a lot more nuance that some people just miss for some reason? I'm gonna ask you, do consumers have the right to buy or not buy things because of insert reasons here? In my opinion, yes, absolutely, consumers have the right to buy or not buy games for whatever arbitrary reasons that they have. It's the choices of individuals and it's up to every individual on why they want to do this or this or that. Now you might disagree or mock their reasoning, but they have the right to express their reasons and to use it as their justification for their action. So again, we can't have the discussion of whether or not we are just the same as SJWs. It's actually a good thing that we have this sort of discussion because we recognize that there are people who are going to pull us into the abyss and they have reasonable concerns over it. I have no doubts that the people who are saying this are well-intentioned, especially when they're being said to their favorite content creators. I do understand why you're saying those things, but let's lay down a couple of facts. First, I want to ask these people so that we can both be on the same page. What makes one to be an SJW? Are you saying that the people who boycott Andromeda because the developer is saying, fuck white people, I will exterminate them, are SJWs? I mean, aren't the SJWs the ones saying fuck white people? At that moment, you're only slapping the label SJW without properly understanding the nuance of the conversation. I want people who throw these accusations to just stop for a moment and think, Maybe there's a little bit more to it than just that. Now, since I make videos concerning these people, I have experience on dealing with these SJWs and Tumblr rights and feminists. To all the detractors who are accusing others of being an SJW for boycotting this game, can you please describe to me the actions that define an SJW? In my opinion, since I've been dealing with these sorts of people, let's put it simply and iron in facts. These are the people who will harm other people's personal enjoyments. For example, they're gonna create moral panics off of a beach volleyball VR game for being a sexy VR game and it's immoral to play with fictional 3D characters. Or how about an RPG game because someone off of Tumblr took one scene of the game way out of context. Polygon, for example, will chastise you for playing online games that objectify women, while at the same time having ads of online games that objectify women. Palmer Lucky was being put in a hit piece by Gizmodo, which was horrendously inaccurate, completely misrepresentative of the actual situation, insanely massive in number, and his girlfriend got harassed and booted off of Twitter. That one guy who complained about Tracer's butt because it's apparently not child-friendly? That chick who thinks that Keijo would be better off to die in obscurity and that fan services should just be censored? Or those people that say that drawing characters in a sexy fashion is sexist, immoral, and demeaning to real-life women? Wall Street Journal chastising PewDiePie by taking his video completely out of context. Just rearrange Wall Street Journal for God's sake, you might get a familiar word out of it. 
So to sum it up, these people create moral panics out of nothing, take things out of context, misrepresent the facts, blatantly hypocritical, harass people out of certain platforms, and calling for censorship. Now, do you seriously believe that all of these traits describe a person who are going to boycott one game for having a developer who says fuck you and your race? No, not at all. Boycotting a game? That's a thing consumers do. You might disagree on why you boycott them, but people do that. It's not an exclusively SJW thing. I personally think you need to be a lot more evil to actually gain that sort of title. Don't make this pejorative title meaningless, guys. Not everybody that you disagree with are SJWs. Now that we got the detractors out, I'm going to ask the question to the people who are boycotting this game. Will you hinder on the rights of others who want to buy this game and or play this game? In my opinion, this is the gray line that defines you from being a consumer into... Mm, I don't really know what to call you. I think activist would be a good word. Yeah, I think that's accurate. You're basically making activism out of boycotting this game. Hashtag drop Dromeda or something along those lines. If you say that you are going to boycott this game, go right ahead. That is ultimately your own personal choice. However, will you force people to do the same thing that you do? Well, if I personally boycott something, I personally would just tell people on why I boycott certain things, but I wouldn't tell them to do the same thing that I do. That depends on them. I can't force people to agree with what I have to say. I can't force people to do the things that I do. That, in my opinion, goes a little bit over the line. I'm not to control what other people think or what other people do. That's entirely on them. Now, am I or am I not boycotting Andromeda? Well, I wouldn't call it a boycott. I just wouldn't buy it. Or at least I wouldn't buy it day one. However... I'm not gonna buy it just because the developer is racist. I have plenty more reasons on not buying Andromeda. Where to even begin? Dragon Age 2, Mass Effect 3, and Inquisition were, in my opinion, disappointing games. Most of Bioware's original team left the game. The writing of this game is on the hands of Mac Walters, someone who I don't trust after the Mass Effect 3 endings. Bioware has a questionable customer support, closing down forums, blocking discussions and disagreements. Their character designs are god-awful. The gameplay looks like a sci-fi inquisition, which will go into evolve an endless amount of fetch quests, resource gathering, crafting, and it can get tiresome. The return of Mako is amazing, the open-ended planet exploration is hopefully more expansive and less repetitive and more varied than Mass Effect 1, but the third-person shooting and the hub-town exploration still feel like Mass Effect 3, which wasn't terrible, but it was underwhelming. Also, the game journalists who shill Bioware and this game are the most unethical hacks that I have seen in a while. Now, I know that this has nothing to do with the game themselves, but I am frankly quite insulted by the people who are defending this game from any sorts of criticisms, and they're mostly coming from the press. During Dragon Age 2, there are quite a slew of articles on how gamers are sexist for simply criticizing the subpar writing on that game, one of which came from Jim Sterling. The criticisms are, in my opinion, justified because the writer of this game claimed that she doesn't really like to play video games. Granted, she is a writer, but she is developing a game that has strong narrative structures. It's a lot different writing the narratives on both a video game and a movie. So understanding the game should be a prerequisite whether you like it or not. During the Mass Effect 3 endings, there are quite a slew of articles accusing gamers on being entitled for demanding better, more conclusive endings. Yep, gamers are entitled, apparently, for wanting a much better ending than the absolute garbage that was the original ones. Thank you so much, game journalist. This, correlated with Bioware's tendencies on blocking their forums, makes me believe that Bioware does not listen to any of their customers in their gaming stuff. If they cannot take criticism from their consumers, that should be a warning sign of how they will treat their next game. Now, there's one recent article from Polygon that... It's just... <sighs> It's the most disgusting thing that I've seen in a while. Mass Effect Andromeda Dev says game features full nudity, says it's totally softcore spaceborne. Pretty good banging, pretty great banging.
Oh, okay, Ben Kuchera off of Polygon. Why is Mass Effect featuring full nudity and great banging is, oh my god, amazing, it's amazing, it's great, it's OMG wonderful, but Dragon Crown and Bayonetta not featuring nudity, just having sexy female characters, oh my god, problematic, offensive, adolescent fantasy. I mean, don't get me wrong, full nudity sex is pretty freaking amazing, but with character designs like, gugh. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Some of Katawa Shoujo's romance options have literally no limbs, but they have prettier graphics and better sex scenes, and that game is free. This game gets a strange preferential treatment from the gaming press. In fact, Bioware games after Mass Effect 2, like Dragon Age 2, Mass Effect 3, and Dragon Age Inquisition, have strange preferential treatment from the press. You can just see this from how the press just mock the living crap out of the gamers and also their jarring users and critics ratings as the game gets progressively more and more underwhelming. So even if the press reviews for Andromeda are excellent, I doubt that it would be received as well for the gamers. Even if I would buy this game, I would buy this game on sale and wait it for the actual user reviews to come in. Or maybe just buy it used or pirate it when they can actually break through the DRMs, I don't know. So in conclusion, if you're not going to buy this game because of the game developer being racist and hateful towards you, that's fine. Consumer boycotts do not make people SJWs. There are people who like some of Bioware's recent games and also hated the SJWs. Don't just slap labels to other people when there's a lot more nuance in the conversation. I mean, SJWs are going to be the new Nazis anytime soon. Before we end this video, huge thanks to new patron Siddhar Thiel and Ryan Gyojahan. You guys are amazing. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead, click the like button, and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me at Patreon. And thanks for watching.